This is a project for the prom committee, uh, 2013 prom. This will be a flat black tabletop. We will cut 2013 into the top, lay a sheet of quarter inch plexi that's been sanded on one side to make it opaque. And then uh, basically in the dark room, it'll, it'll disappear and you'll just have a glowing number tabletop thing. That's the idea. Here they are spaced and centered. Uh, I believe this is uh, 700 font, and it the uh, font I used is called Stencil. Now I'm going to do is stick them down with some spray contact adhesive. Now I'm just going to take the drill and punch a starter hole for the jigsaw in each component to be cut out. I have no idea if this will work or not, but I'm going to go ahead and try to excise the numbers using a, a laminate router with about the tiniest cutting bit I can find. We'll see. This might be a stupid idea. Now we can peel the numbers. Why did I opt to cut it with the router? Well, I knew the router would give me a nice smooth edge. It was hard, however, to get smooth sweeping lines. Does that make sense? The router, the router wants to move and a touch jerky and of course rotational forces depending on which way you end up going with your stencil can can make it push one direction or another but I knew it would leave good smooth lines and so uh, I'm glad I did it with the router I'd recommend doing it with the router but I'd also recommend a bunch of practice first for anybody who hasn't hasn't given it a shot and I don't know if a bigger router would be easier or harder to control I am sure that a bigger bit would uh, cut faster, but the opportunity to make a mistake is much greater. First coat of black. It won't get its second coat of black until it's all done, so that uh, the entire top coat is uniform and I've covered any scratches, that, the inevitable scratches. And of course, we're going to have to screw it down and fill the screw holes or whatnot. So there it is sitting on top of, ironically, the uh, exploding record roulette arena is its drying rack right now and the paint has really relaxed the curl so that's nice the interior table is very very easy it's uh it's literally just a box okay and there will be a dividing bar between each one uh, i'll find out whatever spacing is about is about even and that's so that i can make each individual number a different color the process is simply a hollow box I'll use battery-operated Christmas lights, ring the number, should be fun. Basically, the table is done now. You can see I've compartmentalized each and every number, and then there's a notch so that my chaser can get inside. And so basically, hold on, buddy boy. Are you colored inside? That one. That oh, one. you're doing a great job. I got to paint it. You got to paint it, just I like I'm doing. It, okay. So the strand will come in. It'll go around the outside edge. And I got 24 feet. Uh, a battery-operated 24-foot chaser light. So I'm, I'm really hoping that'll be enough to come around 
circle each twice, come around. That'll give a nice even glow when it's on solid. What the table needs now, other than to simply dry, is uh, install the chaser lights, put the backer board on. I'll paint the entire uh, front side of the backer board white as well to help reflect the, the light around inside there. Other than that, we're just looking at edge banding and coming up with a opaque plexiglass top. You're going to saw your box. Okay, I'll watch. Good sawing. Don't hurt yourself. And there she sits, ready basically for the plexiglass top. So what I've done is I've put some decorative edge banding. It's just some molding I made up. And it sits proud of the tabletop, the thickness of my sheet of plexiglass. If I had to do it over again, I think I would have put it double. I've had a bit of a rethink on how I'm going to illuminate the numbers. And rather than trying to evenly sand the backside of the plexi, I'm just going to use oiled paper. Contrary to its name, oiled paper is not actually oil on paper. It's actually uh, a polyurethane or a lacquer on paper. Right? It looks normal right up until you compare it to a regular sheet. And the fact that you can basically see through it. But what it'll allow me to do is put a light behind it and get it to illuminate in that sort of diffused way and give me my color. So oiling the paper is a rather simple task. But it's messy. Which is good because I have my helper. You say hi? Hi. <laughs> All right. Yeah, buddy? Okay, hold on. Hold on one second. Now we're ready to apply our translucent paper to our numerals. This one is fairly simple since it's basically the right width. More or less, I'm just going to apply a little bit of wood glue and uh, carefully smooth it out with some blocks. Idea. I'll just go around my number and that should be good. To stick them down, I'm using Elmer's white glue, thinned with a small amount of water. And I'll brush it on. Glue it up. Lay it in place. Should be more than enough to hold it. There it is, all wired up. And it runs off of this battery pack, which will have to emerge from the bottom of the table, and then I'll put an eye hook and hang it there. Because that's what it's intended to do, anyways. It's got a number of different settings. Be honest, the lights are underpowered. Um, this is very convenient because it's battery powered, and I know that once I get my reflective back on here, it'll pump more power through. But right now, it's underpowered. It's underpowered. What's fun? <laughs>